Yuri Bromf and Brennan's ecological systems theory emphasises how the context and interrelationships that surround a child affect all aspects of a child's development. Bromf and Brennan saw the individual's experience as a set of nested structures, each inside the next, like a set of Russian dolls. These are referred to as the microsystem, mesosystem, exosystem and macrosystem, as well as the chronosystem, which is indicative of the passage of time and is present in each of the other four. A child's education attainment is profoundly enriched by adding an ecological perspective. This useful orienting framework provides a strong theoretical basis for assessing the strengths and weaknesses of any particular child's engagement and progress with his or her surrounding environments. It is important to understand the complex interactions working within and between the context that directly and indirectly impact a child's education development. The first and most central is the microsystem. The microsystem is the immediate environment that the child lives in. Children's microsystems will include any immediate relationships or organisations they interact with, such as their immediate family or caregivers, peers, neighbourhood and their school. These groups or organisations that interact with the child will have the most direct impact on the child's educational outcomes. Their interactions with the child are consistent and shape the child's values and beliefs. The more encouraging and nurturing these relationships and places are, the better the child's development and educational attainment will be. However, as a central figure within their own system, many forces are exerting influence that can acerbate or mitigate the promotion of educational attainment. For an example, data released by the Australian Bureau of Statistics found that 603,000 or 17.7% of all children were living in poverty in Australia. The stresses and negative life events that often occur in impoverished homes can diminish the capacity of parents to provide economic security, psychological resources and parenting quality, cognitive stimulation and resources for child enrichment, the ability to mentor and advocate for their child educationally, express academic expectations for their children, role modelling and the social and cultural capital relevant to achievement. Therefore, the relationship between parental socioeconomic status and educational outcomes indicates that children from low SES families are more likely to exhibit a pattern in terms of educational outcomes compared to children with high SES families. Further, the low SES of newly resettled refugees, for an example, subject the children in the family directly to the unprivileged segments of the host society that might surface through their academic progress. In other words, children from low-income families tend to have fewer opportunities at home to encourage them to find interest or see value in learning, foster competence or develop social relationships that support and value educational attainment. Constantine and Zapala, however, state that while parents may have a low socioeconomic status, the educational outcomes of a child can be neutralised, strengthened or mediated by a range of other contextual family and individual characteristics, such as parental support and family cohesion. As a child progresses through school, there is potential for a multitude of microsystems. Some will have a profound impact on educational attainment, while others will have a minor impact. But all of these microsystems will contribute to the child's socialisation and educational outcomes as they interact with and learn from the relationships and experiences. The next sphere, the mesosystem, is formed by the relationships between those and the various microsystems as they work together in supporting children's educational attainment. By strengthening the relationship within the mesosystem, Bromf and Brenner argued that the child's educational needs and interests are best supported and society best meets its obligation in ensuring the best interests of children. For example, children's educational attainment can be supported best when the microsystems of home and school interact within the mesosystem and build strong relationships with one another. It is well established that parent-teacher relationships have positive influences on educational outcomes for children. Jordan and Plank claim parent-teacher relationships contribute to higher educational achievement and post-secondary educational trajectories. However, Harm and Pienta claim that the positive relationships between home and school appear to be less common for low-income and racial minority families. The lack of continuity between homeschool environments may contribute to the stereotype views of families the teacher may hold, and as such, the disadvantage perpetuated by this view can influence a student's self-esteem and their motivation and inclination to succeed in school. Further, Cultural and language differences can often impact parent-teacher relationships for ethnic minority families. Ethnic minority parents are often hesitant to engage in rich conversations regarding the child, their home and community life, as communication is especially difficult when teachers do not share a common language. Hence, limited communication contributes to disconnected relationship and has the consequences for the child's educational attainment. Bromf and Brenner's third environmental layer, the exosystem, is the system of institutions that the child does not directly interact with, but the institutions will indirectly affect their microsystems as well as the child themselves. As stated, it has an indirect effect on the child because the influence from the exosystem usually impacts the child as it trickles down through other people in the child's life. For example, children are rarely in direct contact with their parents' workplace, but their immediate experience can be affected by their parents' pay schedule, distance and work conditions. The economic, social and emotional stresses of daily living for low-income families may provide less time, energy and resources for children to attend after-school activities or play sports, thus affecting their social, emotional, cognitive and physical well-being. Government policy and laws, school board meetings and city council decisions can also have an indirect impact on the child through their access system. In the planning and designing of new communities, housing projects and urban renewal, the planners, both public and private, need to give explicit consideration to the kind of world that is being created for children who will be growing up in these settings. 
The importance of neighbourhoods throughout childhood resonates with evidence from several studies suggesting that residents in disadvantaged neighbourhoods may have a negative effect on the cognitive development of children for many years or even generations later. For example, neighbourhoods may affect school quality through the inability of neighbourhood schools attracting and retaining educators, in turn may shape educational outcomes for students. A macro system is based on factors around the child's belief system, cultural background and lifestyle opinions. The diagram shows how the macro system of a child is impacted by other systems on Bromf and Brennan's theory and how it relates to more personal influence on a child that were earlier in the system. A child gets most of these traits from their parents and what they introduce the child to. For instance, Asian parents' cultural background in Confucian ideology and values of filial piety play a large role in their children's educational outcomes. Asian Australian children aligning with Confucian ideals fulfil their duties of filial piety and independence by seeking academic achievement as compensation for their parents' sacrifices and financial difficulties as first-generation immigrants. However, even though filial piety is identified as a motivating factor for academic achievement, filial piety also predicts anxiety and depression in Chinese adolescents, which in turn can affect their educational outcomes. A child's macro system is also affected by political beliefs and guidelines. The political system of the country the child is a citizen of changes how they look at the world and how they grow up. For example, the attitudes held by the general public about education and educational funding has the potential to affect the educational outcomes of children. In many areas of the country, dissatisfaction is currently being expressed with the way state and federal funding fails to keep pace with the cost of education. In low socio-economic school districts, the potential impact includes larger school and class sizes, less access to transportation, a reduction in extracurricular activities and fewer experienced teachers. Together, these factors place children who attend schools within in such district at risk for less optimal educational outcomes. The child's chronosystem is affected by their macrosystem from the customs they carry throughout their life. Chronosystem ends up embodying a part of each system. A person is looking at the passage of time and the changes that they went through. Each system builds up upon each other and the chronosystem provides a bigger picture or timeline to see those changes. Changes in family circumstances brought about by historical events affect a child's education development over long term. Developmental processes and outcomes are constantly changing and shaped by life trajectories children follow, has increasingly directed attention to cultural identities and socio-economic status as bundles of variables that impact children education. For example, the effect of low socioeconomic status, racism and social inclusion for Indigenous Australian children has had important implications for their education and attainment. The capacity and desire of families to get their children to school, trouble accessing schools, particularly in remote areas, and the inability to afford education are factors that Indigenous children will experience and have cumulative impact on educational outcomes over time. Bronf and Brenner's ecological theory outlines the complexity of contextual influences on a child's development and it recognises that the child's context is an interwoven structure that facilitates or impedes their educational outcomes.